Welcome to the Tile Confidential Podcast. My name is Saul, an author, tile installer, and owner of Bella Tile Store. I want to help you learn about tile to make choosing tile for your next home improvement project easy. You're about to embark on a journey into the world of tiles and learn from myself and other leading experts in the industry, such as manufacturers, designers, retailers, architects, and much more. If I can help you feel confident when it comes to tile, then I've done my job. So without further ado, let's get into our episode. Welcome to the, another episode of the Tile Confidential Podcast. And um, in this episode, what we're going to talk about is um, the relationship between uh, the current trends in porcelain tiles and natural stone. Um, what we're going to do here is discuss natural stones in more in depth on trying to help you understand, you know, how they're formed, what types there are, and how they're categorized. And why that's very important is because today, a lot of the porcelain tiles that are becoming very popular in most designs and also in most people um, purchase uh, tend to have a kind of a stone lookalike, natural stone lookalike. So, uh, for instance, even in my store, Vela Tiles, we have uh, most of the collections um, resembling things like travertine, limestone, soapstone. And we tend to call these types of porcelain tiles uh, natural stone replicas or natural stone effects. So in this podcast episode, we're going to talk about what is natural stone we're going to talk about um, why people prefer to use uh, porcelain natural stone replicas versus the actual natural stones. And there's a lot of reasons for that that we'll discuss. Um, we're also going to discuss various types of natural stones and how they're formed. Um, a little bit of an introduction to geology. And we're also going to discuss um, the mineral composition of some of these. And why this is important is because uh, after listening to this podcast, I hope that you'll be able to get a, a, um, a general idea about the different properties of these natural stones and so that you can be able to identify them when you go into a, a tile store, say, hey, that looks like a quartzite uh, or hey that tile looks like it resembles onyx or that tile looks like i mean everybody knows marble but for instance that one looks like limestone so if you're trying to create a design in a bathroom or a kitchen and you want to bring in a certain type of natural stone it'd be good to think about what that stone is first and then go look for the person tile um, I think in today, uh, sort of people are a little bit misguided in terms of when you asked about the finish that they might be looking for, um, because they just are not aware. Most people, when they think of porcelain tile finishes, they were going to say, oh, I want polished or matte. Um, but there's so much more ways to categorize tiles, um, and in, in, in the next podcast episode, we're going to finish this as well. But we're going to just focus on this approach of looking at, at, at tiles. Um, and, you know, ceramic tiles do also come into these, like these natural stone replicas. But they just, they don't give that um, luxurious or closeness, you want to say, of what an uh, a porcelain tile can give uh, with respect to a natural stone. So um, that's why we're going to focus on porcelain tiles or discussing porcelain tiles here in this episode. 
So let's uh, get into our podcast and um, I hope you enjoy. All right, so let's get into it with discussing what is natural stone. We have to make a distinction here because there's a lot of engineered products that have uh, come out and people think that that's natural stone, but it technically is not. So a natural stone is stones that have been harvested in in institute positions within the earth, and then they are cut uh, machined into final products. So uh, they typically will cut into slabs and then and go through more processing if they're going to be cut into, let's say, uh, particular t- sizes for tile or if it's going to be used as countertops or whatnot. But it, it, it definitely it starts at the point of harvesting from the earth. Engineer products are processed basically in t- uh, f- from like small particles and then they're reconstituted with sort of some kind of a cement base or resin based binders um, and as a result as you can see they don't meet the definition of natural stone because they're more man-made stones um, and you know when we think about what makes natural stone so appealing is I think to do with the fact that it is the fact that it's, it has a bit of a rarity quality about it. And, you know, anything that is rare is going to just have more value. It's going to be more unique. Um, and, you know, because it's being harvested, chances are that particular block or slab that you might purchase um, is not going to be replicated easily by somebody else. You know, it's it's coming from a certain spot on the earth. It's cut in a certain way. Like these are all qualities about that particular stone that's going to be very unique. So it it, it really brings the value of this product up quite a lot, which makes it, or traditionally has made it quite pricey. And if we're going to think about, let's say, natural stone tiles, they've t- typically been reserved for people for in, in, you know, people who can afford them because, you know, for instance, marble tiles or or travertine tiles has typically been quite expensive with respect to, you know, uh, ceramic or porcelain tiles. But that's going to be changing, and it's starting to change actually quite a bit with the introduction. Um, of um, thin porcelain panels or sometimes gauged porcelain panels, they call them, that has uh, been around quite a number of years in Europe and it's coming down now in in North America more and more. Um, More suppliers are bringing, importing them in, more stores are carrying them as well, Um, which interestingly, you would think, you know, uh, natural stone would still have its um, status uh, amongst all the other, you know, products. But this kind of replica, you know, you want to say, is taking the world by storm. And uh, you know, slabs of tiles that are uh, manufactured are becoming more and more pricier because of the processing that it goes through. And so I'm going to go into the next step of discussing uh, sort of a case for why porcelain tile is probably going to surpass in terms of its value, the natural stone, for at least for the next few years. Um, And, you know, you look at, for instance, one aspect of it that everybody might look at is price. So let's look at it typical prices, you know, for different types of natural stone tiles. It's travertine, for instance, can go up to about, you know, $15 per square foot. Marble, 
depending on the marble, would be anywhere between ten to twenty dollars per square foot. Um, these are USD dollars. You know, just stats I've picked up over the internet. Um, and like for instance, slate can be anywhere between fifteen to twenty eight dollars per square foot. These slate tiles. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm discussing these are quality products. Obviously, there's less quality ones out there as well. It would be cheaper, but let's just to focus on them. Now, a gauge porcelain panel can range anywhere between $30 to $40 for a very good quality, let's say, European made. Um, and that's a lot to do with the cost of importing them, storing them, transporting them. And even though it's a manufactured product, it's still quite expensive and it's up there with the natural stones. So if we think about what makes a lot of things that are unique in our society uh, sought after for by people, it's an element of status, really. And an element of saying, hey, I can afford this, Um, you know, just kind of putting it out there and letting people know that, hey, look, I can do, you know, this is something that, you know, it's the same psychology you want to say with regards to, um, you know, purchasing expensive vehicles or or expensive houses or uh, buying an overpriced cottage in Muskoka. which is we've seen a lot of in, in during the COVID time. Um, but in any case, it, you know, that, that's where it becomes uh, the, the, the price of it. It's really up there with natural stone, if not higher. So um, the, the, the other thing about it is that, for instance, natural stones, as I mentioned earlier, are all unique. So if you see a particular slab and you really like it, chances are of you getting, or some, let's say somebody purchased it and you didn't get your hands on it, chances of you find the exact same one that you really liked is very tough. But that's not the case with porcelain. You can see a porcelain tile somewhere and be like, I want that. And you're, because it's, man-made is mass produced you're going to get it you want it you got it so that's another element that's another kind of a gold star for porcelain is that if you see something online and you really like it you can get it if you want it um the other thing about you know natural stone that's not so much the case with porcelain is that the properties within even within the type of stone that you're selecting, let's say marble, the properties, even within that that type of stone can vary from marble to marble. So um, as a result, its application can be quite uh, limiting in some situations. Uh, whereas that's not the case with porcelain. Uh, in, in most porcelain tiles, um, if they're categorized as a porcelain, they're going to be have a water absorption of less than 0.5%. So they can be used in showers. Um, porcelain tiles are quite dense. They're um, impervious. And, and uh, as a result, they, they can be installed um, on floors, on walls, outdoors. Um, there are some factors that one needs to can take consideration. Maybe it comes to like slip resistance and all that kind of stuff that, you know, but it's not that you need to worry so much as much as you would have to with natural stone. And you have to be quite educated about the subject to know that maybe this marble can be used in in this particular application, but maybe this marble cannot be. Um, Just talking about marble, for instance, marble um, is is categorized based on something called its soundness. Um, And it goes from A, B, C, D. And, uh, you know, and a soundness marble will be quite more dense than, for instance, the soundness marble. Um, and its applications can be quite uh, limiting for something like a D. So that's one other aspect of what makes porcelain tile beneficial. Um, 
The other thing is that because um, natural stone, again, comes from the earth, um, it's going to be really sensitive to things like lighting and the surrounding materials. So uh, as it opposed to, for instance, a porcelain tile, where it's going to be pretty unif uniform across its surface in terms of uh, how it's going to respond to lighting. So if you are uh, taking a particular stone, you might see it within, uh, let's say, a showroom. It may look completely different when you bring it home, when you put it up. It, this can happen with porcelain, but it's so much less likely. Um, and so another benefit is that what you see in a showroom when you bring home is going to be much more, um, less of a surprise to you, you want to say, than it is um, uh, with natural stone. Um, and this is an important case too. Let's say you're doing a you know, complete renovation and you don't know what lighting, you don't know what the lumens and all that kind of stuff is going to be for the lighting you're going to get. And so, but you've already picked your flooring and the flooring is then you, maybe some of that stuff you're going to pick at the end of your renovation process or, or finalize it. And so these are all the things that can affect the lighting of the room, the paint color, all these things can quite substantially affect the, the color of, of what you might see. Um, an element of maintenance, I mean, goes without saying is, is, is definitely one to consider when it comes to natural stones. I mean, one of the things that, we look at is the porosity, um, uh, which basically determines its resistance to decay, resistance to absorption of, of water. Um, and, but that's not so much the case. You can have a porcelain tile that looks very close to travertine, but it will never have all the problems of porosity that the travertine has. Um, and, you know, some places they fill them with resin, some places they fill it with uh, like a cement base um, product to kind of fill those those holes in, 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 in travertine. But um, you won't have to worry about that with, with porcelain tiles. The other element that to really consider is the um, abrasion resistance. So porcelain tiles... They can vary in their abrasion resistance, but they tend to be pretty resistant to scratches. A good one, especially coming from good manufacturers. But that's not the case with natural stones. So how we do that is um, something called the MOHS scale, the MOSS scale. I discussed this in, in the first podcast episode, if you want to go back and, and get a better idea of what that, a um, more, more, little bit more description on it. But, um, but you can think of it like this, like, uh, a soapstone, uh, which we'll get into discussing, uh, has the hardness, the, the lowest hardness of all the natural stones. I mean, it, it's so soft. And so if you like that look, but you want to put that in your, in your bathroom, uh, porcelain tile can allow you to have that, that soapstone look anywhere you want without the worry of, you know, scratches. Um, you know, marble the in itself, it sits between three and four. So you can, so just to give you an idea, this, this scale goes from one to 10 and determines the density of the uh, different material. And it's usually used as a test and it's, you can also compare it to other um, products that you might think of when you're determining hardness of something. So on the scale, marble can get scratched by a penny, the hardness of a penny. Um, so that's how sensitive marble can be. So think about like this now, you, you wanna have a foyer, 
and you know there's going to be a lot of traffic there, you like the marble veining, you can either go with marble or you can go with nice porcelain um, slab or you can go with a panel and you can have none of that problem of scratches. And you can run you can run a penny on that porcelain tile as much as you want. Nothing's going to happen. So that's the, the other benefit of porcelain tiles. So I hope I have kind of given a de- at least a decent enough case uh, on why porcelain tiles are going to be a better choice for most people um, as we go into the uh, next, I'd say, five to ten years uh, in terms of design because of its all these pr- qualities that I've mentioned. And it still includes the element of, um, you know, status when it comes to having porcelain tiles because although it doesn't meet maybe like the fact that, oh, you know, natural stones are very unique, so you're going to have that uniqueness element of it. Um, as we're moving into gauge porcelain panels, that's also going to be a factor of, of status in there as well. So, and you can have all those natural natural stone effects like onyx or marble or travertine or or basalt and all that kind of stuff as well. So it's, it's incredible the kind of images that I've seen for for slabs now. All right, moving forward, um, the next thing I want to discuss is. Um, the how do these stones are categorized in a little geology one on one um stones natural stones in our in the earth is formed through three different ways the first one is called sedimentary stone formation the second one is metamorphic stone formation and the third one is igneous storm formation. And these are basically, when you think of something like quartz or marble or onyx or travertine, they're all going to fall in, under one of these three um, stone formations in the earth. And that's how they look very different from each other. So I think it would be important for you to know when you are going to the store and you're looking at a particular tile, and if you see, let's say, veining, Versus if you see like stripes of lines, you can think to yourself, oh, interesting. This is, um, you know, a metamorphic stone formation type of tile. This is, I, I'm not sure, let's, just, you, let's say you're not really confident about which particular stone it is, but you can kind of tell what, uh, what stone formation it's, it's um trying to mimic and that can be kind of interesting that can bring a bit of a character to that tile that you're determining you don't need to look at it as like is it a matte or polish let's look at deeper let's look at it from a point of view of like you're almost like selecting natural stone so sedimentary stone formation are basically rocks that are formed near the earth's surface um in contrast um, to like igneous or metamorphic rocks, there which are, these are kind of formed within the deep depth of the earth. So sedimentary rocks more closer to the surface. Um, they're basically formed from deposits of pre-existing rocks or pieces, or it can be sometimes like once living organisms, um, like shells, you know, fossils and stuff like that, and and then basically accumulating layer by layer on the Earth's surface. Um, and then as it's being layered, it gets buried deeply and it becomes compacted and then cemented as well. And through this pressure, it forms the sedimentary rock. Um, a lot of other factors play into the formation of them, not just this. Um, you know, erosion, weathering, um, wind, rain, just natural geological um, effects of uh, on that that you might we we all experience. These are all, you know, over we're talking like millions of years. Um, basically, these slowly break down large rocks off the mountains. And then they create smaller ones, and these pile up, which are like, um, 
you know, create sands and, and, you know, heavy sand layering up on top of another. So we're talking millions of years and, you know, there's other aspects of it as well, like acidity, um, which can wear the stone away and some of the interesting colors that we might see within cross section of one of these, um, that's, blocks that might be harvested let's just say in the case of a natural stone we can kind of see the effects of different chemistries also how that plays into it so sedimentary rocks they tend to look very layered so if you ever just look at a porcelain tile and it looks kind of layered that's going to mimic a sedimentary rock type and typically for our purposes they're going to these these type of tiles mimic either a limestone kind of effect, um, a travertine kind of effect, um, or an onyx kind of effect, or sandstones. Um, I will, in our YouTube channel, I will also um, make a video on to show you what these actually look like. Um, but for now, the purpose of this episode was just to kind of go over, you know, the, the details of, of the different categories. So the next one is metamorphic rock formation. And as I mentioned earlier, they are, you know, more in, underneath the sediments, the sedimentary rock formations, they're deeper into the earth. And the way they're formed, they are formed is through high heat, high pressure, and like high mineral rich fluids. Um, and typically it's a combination of all of these factors that tie in together to create such rock. Is it's it's very unlikely that if one of these elements is missing, it's going to form. Um, and that's why conditions of these are found like deep within the earth where you know tectonic plates might might meet and shift and uh, you know so so that's sort of what that the criteria for kind of making these as you can see quite different than the sedimentary rocks formation um so as a result you can expect a different kind of look to these types of stones um and, uh, you know, you know, when we talk about high heat, high pressure, um, high mineral rich, rich fluids, um, you know, tectonic plates colliding. Um, and, and one of the elements is that these, as after, even though all these things are happening, it needs, it requires the rock to stay so in a solid state and not melt because if it melts, it's not going to form your metamorphic rock. So it's a it's, it's very unique things that need to happen in order for it to form. And typically what you get out of it is um, stones like marble, slate, quartzite, serpentine, and soapstones. So a lot of like the veiny type of stones that you might see like are typically uh almost all the time metamorphic stones and moving on to our final stone formation is igneous igneous rocks we think of igneous rocks i think most of us will think of granite and we all know what granite looks like and it sort of looks like it just came out of a lava, <laughs> right? So igneous rocks are formed from magma, and which then cools and crystallizes. Um, and it's typically, you know, either at volcanoes on the Earth's surface or, um, you know, while, you know, a melted rock is inside, like within a crust that it you know, comes to the surface of the Earth from, from a deep, deep, you know, core close to the crust, but it, it requires a really high temperature. So these are the these are the rocks that you would think. You remember I said earlier, metamorphic rock shouldn't melt. 
these are the rocks that basically melt and then they become the effect of what you see out of igneous stone formation. And they cool and they create things like granite or basalt. Basalt is a lot more darker. Um, I've personally worked with it before. I made a, a porch out of it and it is a beautiful stone. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Um, kind of gives you that jet black kind of look, especially if it's um, uh, polished and um, and we seal it as well with a, maybe a polished sealer um, and that can make it look really nice. Um, the next element um, of importance to discuss is, uh, you know, although we just we kind of categorize these stones in sedimentary, metamorphic, or igneous, there's another thing to consider as well, um, just for the sake of argument, for because these stones can also be categorized under their mineral composition. Probably not so going to be so important for you to remember when you're going to a tosser as opposed to the sedimentary, metamorphic, igneous kind of effects that I just discussed. But it's just good to know, like, the mineral composition of these stones also becomes a factor in terms of how they look. So the two mineral composition categories are calcareous stones or siliceous stones. Calcareous stones are tend to be made up of calcium carbonate, like mostly made of calcium carbonate. Um, if a particular situation when it's some magnesium carbonate, it might be a, a dolomite. They'll become a dolomite. But um, most of the time, calcium carbonate. Siliceous stones are made of silica and silicates. So calcareous stones are stones like limestone, travertine, onyx, marble. These are your calcareous. These are stones that are calcium carbonate based. Silicia stones are like sandstones, slate, quartzite, serpentine, soapstone, granite, basalt. Okay, so that's really what I wanted to go over in this episode. Um, I hope you can take this and maybe you can look at do a little bit of your own research and to get a more of a visual on it. As I said, I will do a YouTube video to give a more of a visual about um, the different stones as well. And I'll put together some really interesting pictures. Um, we will be having a podcast episode with um, uh, a good friend of mine who um, is in the business of, um, he's been actually, sorry, in the, in the stone industry for about 20 years. And uh, he's going to, probably discuss into more depth about the subject um, but really the goal here was so that you recognize the tiles when you walk into a store now what are they trying to mimic what are they trying to replica which particular stone category are they trying to replica and if the store clerk that you work with is going to be knowledgeable on the subject of natural stone and you they can probably guide you even in a better direction i for one i'm a big fan of um of natural stone and so uh, you know if someone says to me oh i want you know kind of a marble look and i say well there's marble but then there is also you know a soapstone as well that can have kind of a marble kind of veining in there too so and you can get a lot of different variations in color and stuff from soapstones than it is, you know, with your typical marble, which is, you know, either a white or black marble, maybe black. Um, and although there's, you know, blue, blue marble <laughs> coming out as well. I've seen some pictures of that. There's always something new. So, yep, I'm glad uh, we were able to do, uh, give you guys a, a good understanding on the subject uh, without going on and on. I will end this podcast episode and I will see you guys on the next episode. Thank you.